In this lesson, we're going to take a look at two important trigonometric limits. We're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x equals 1, and the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x divided by x equals 0. Now these two limits are important because they're used in the evaluation of the derivatives of the sine and cosine functions. Now we're going to take a look at two graphics first to justify these two, then we'll look at some examples, and then we're going to look at a rigorous proof of the first one. Now the first one here, we're going to look at the limit x approaches 0 sine x over x equaling 1. Now here we have a graph with the sine function and right there is the graph of y equals x. Now we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 so we're going to look very close around the origin here and we're going to uh, look at how these two graphs compare to each other. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to zoom in around the origin and see how they compare. Now as I zoom in, notice that the graphs, that well, they become virtually indistinguishable. They look exactly the same. So when x is very, very close to 0, we have that the sine of x is virtually the same as x. And so, of course, if I divide sine to the other, or divide x to this side, I get that the sine of x divided by x is approximately 1. And this approximation becomes better and better as x gets closer and closer to the origin, because we see the graphs are virtually indistinguishable. So that's why the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x is 1. Now let's take a look down here. We're going to consider the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x. one minus cosine x divided by x equaling zero. All right, so let's see why the graphs indicate that this limit should be zero. So down here, we have the graphs of y equals one minus cosine x. And this is the graph of y equals x. Now we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0. So if we zoom in around the origin here, let's see how the graphs of 1 minus cosine x compares to the graph of x. So as I zoom in, you'll notice that the graph of 1 minus cosine x becomes virtually zero in comparison to y equals x. So for x very close to zero, this value, 1 minus cosine x, is going to be very, very close to zero in comparison to x. So we see that 1 minus cosine x is approximately zero for x very close to the origin. And so, if I take 1 minus cosine x and I divide it by x, I'm still going to get something that is approximately 0, because in comparison to x, this is much a much, much smaller number, as you can see from the graphs here. And so that justifies why the limit as x approaches 0, 1 minus cosine x divided by x equals 0. Now let's take a look at some examples. Let's um, first look at, we're going to 
uh, take a look at three limits here. First of all, we're going to consider the limit as x approaches 0 tangent x divided by x. Now the way all three of these problems will work is to try to bring into play the sine x sine x divided by x and 1 minus cosine x divided by x. We'll tr so we'll try to rewrite these to somehow involve these two functions and then keep in mind that this one is approaching 1 as x goes to 0 and this one is approaching 0. So for the first one here, all right, well, uh, we have to it, it, you know, bring into play one of these. Well, we know that tangent is sine over cosine, so let's rewrite that as the limit x approaches 0 of sine x divided by cosine x all of that divided by x. And then we can rewrite this as one over cosine x times sine x divided by x. Now as x approaches zero we know that the cosine of x is approaching 1. Because of a previous result, we can just plug 0 in for this x, and the cosine of 0 is 1, right? So this piece of our function is approaching 1 as x goes to 0, and we know that this is approaching 1, and so our limit is going to be 1 times 1, or just 1 in this case. So we've just proven that the limit as x approaches 0, tangent x divided by x, is 1 by relating it to this limit, sine x divided by x. Now let's take a look at this one. So here somehow we have to bring into play sine x over x, or 1 minus cosine x. 1 minus cosine x divided by x. Well, it looks like we're going to bring into play sine x over x because I see a sine and I see an x here. So let's, now we're going to rewrite this in sort of a tricky manner. We're going to write this as the limit. I'm going to bring the 5 out. All right. Now, what we want to do here is uh, this almost looks like sine x divided by x, but not quite. We've got this 3 right here. What we're going to do is we're going to put a 3 right down here with this x and then multiply it back out so we don't change anything. So we're going to do this. All right. Now, uh, you see, what we have here, remember that, or notice that, as x goes to 0, so does 3x, right? Okay. So this looks a lot like the sine of u divided by u, right, where u is equal to 3x. and the u is approaching 0 because 3x is approaching 0 as x goes to 0. So sine of u divided by u will appro be approaching 1 and so this quantity right here is approaching 1 as x goes to 0 because it looks just like sine u over u. And then this piece right here is just approaching 3 fifths, right? because it stays, it's a constant, okay? And so our limit, our limit is just going to be 3 fifths times 1, which is just 3 fifths. Okay, and that's how we handle that problem.
Now, let's take a look at this one down here. So once again, we want to try to break this apart somehow to bring into play sine x over x and 1 minus cosine x over x. So we're going to split this apart as follows. We're going to write it as Alright, see, that's all we did here. So now this one's pretty easy at this point now because as x goes to 0 we know that this piece approaches 1 and this part right here approaches 0 and so our limit is just going to be 1 times 0 which is 0. And that's it. That's all we had to do for that one. Okay, so when, you know, handling limits like these, we try to somehow relate them back to rewrite them so that we involve the sine x over x and or 1 minus cosine x over x. Now let's take a look at a rigorous proof that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. So we're going to go back up here and we're going to prove that alright now to do this we're going to consider this diagram over over here what we have is we have a portion of the unit circle right here notice that this is one right here on the x-axis this is our angle theta right here. Uh, that's also why I wrote it as theta approaching 0 and not x. And then we have these two triangles that are formed ABE and ACD. And also um, we're going to technically let theta approach 0 from the right hand side. So technically we're letting theta approach 0 from the right, but it's very easy to argue that if this is true for theta approaching 0 from the right, it's also true for theta approaching 0 from the left. We'll save that for the end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the area of the two triangles with the wedge-shaped piece A, B, D. So first of all, the area of the triangle ACD. Let's see, what's that equal to? Well, remember for a triangle, area is one half base times height. So we need to determine this distance and this distance. Now we know that this is 1 down here, so we have to find out what is h. Well, let's, let's notice that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so that's h over 1, and so this h right here is just the tangent of theta. So the area of our triangle is going to be 1 half base 1 times the height, which is the tangent of theta. Alright, so that's the area of that triangle. Now let's find out the area of the triangle ABE. So for that triangle, we need to determine these two distances. So we'll call this H. Now let's notice that the distance from A to B is 1, right? because we're on the unit circle, right? because that's 1 right there on the x-axis. So what we have then is the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, and so that's going to be h over 1, and so h is just the sine of theta. By the same reasoning, the base is the cosine of theta because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and so the area of this triangle is one half 
cosine theta times the sine of theta. Now let's figure out what is the area of that wedge-shaped piece, ABD. So we want to find the area of this. Now, to find the area of that piece, let's first of all note the area of the entire unit circle going all the way around. If I were to extend this arc, go all the way around, the area of the unit circle would be pi times the radius squared, and the radius is just 1. Now, to find the area of this uh, wedge-shaped piece, we need to find out what fractional part is it of the entire unit circle. And then just multiply that number by pi. For example, it looks like this wedge-shaped piece here is about one-eighth of the entire unit circle the way I have it drawn. So the area of ABD would be approximately one-eighth of pi times one squared. All right, so what we're going to do to find out the fractional part that this is of the entire unit circle, just think of extending theta all the way around like this. That angle would then be 2 pi or 360 degrees. So the fractional part that this is of the entire unit circle would then just be theta over 2 pi. So we just need to multiply that up here and that simplifies as theta over 2. All right, so that's the area of that wedge-shaped piece. Now what we're going to do is let's compare the area of these three regions. Let's note that the smaller area is the triangle ABE. So we have 1 half one half cosine theta times sine theta. That is less than uh, the area of the sector, the wedge ABD, which is theta over two. And that's less than the area of the large triangle, one half tangent theta. Now we can cancel the twos and then we end up with this inequality. Now I'm going to write the tangent theta as sine theta over cosine theta. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide everything here by the sine theta or multiply by one over sine theta. So that'll cancel this sign and this sign. And what we end up with then is All right. So now uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to take the limit of each term here as theta approaches zero from the right. So just take the limit. Theta approaches, oops, theta approaches zero. Now notice that as theta approaches zero, the cosine of theta goes to one. That's approaching one because the cosine of zero is one. This is also approaching one over here because cosine of 0 is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. So by the squeeze theorem, the middle term must be approaching 1. All right, now this middle term looks almost like sine theta over theta. Well, if this is approaching 1, then surely sine theta over theta is also approaching 1. Well, we can write that out precisely like this. Notice then that we'll say therefore limit as theta approaches zero.
You see, by writing it, by writing it like this, we relate sine theta over theta to theta over sine theta, and now we know that this is approaching 1. We've just proven that, and so this limit is going to be 1 over 1, or just 1. And we're finished. Now the only thing is we did say theta was approaching 0 from the right. Uh, what if theta approaches 0 from the left? Well, just note that we have this result. Um, the sine of negative theta over negative theta. Now, by properties of sine, I can actually pull that negative out in front. That's a trigonometric result. So this is, is the same as negative sine theta over negative theta. And these two negatives then cancel. So in other words, the sine of a negative number divided by a negative number is the same as the sine of the positive number divided by the positive number. So you see, if theta is a small positive number approaching zero from the from the right, then we know this approaches one. Well then this is just a small number approaching zero from the left, but it's the same as this, so that's approaching one as well. And so by that reasoning we can say that this is also true up here for theta approaching zero from the left. And now we're finished. Now we know that the full limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta is 1. And that does it. Alright, so that concludes our video of these two important trigonometric results.